Good morning, everyone. Welcome to College of the Ozarks virtual chat. I am Brittany with the Discover Dairy Program, and we are so excited that you are joining us today as we get to meet Farmer Layla, Farmer Ryan, and of course, your adorable calves, Ali Oop, Amplify, and Arlene. First, this live chat is part of the Adopt-A-Cow program. More than 40,000 teachers and 1 million students every year join this fun, free opportunity, all thanks to our partners like Midwest Dairy Association and Dairy Excellence Foundation. The Adopt-A-Cow and Discover Dairy programs are free online resources that cover common core standards in math, reading, and science, all while using dairy concepts to teach those lessons. Those resources can be found at discoverdairy.com, and we'll go ahead and drop that in the chat for you so you can access that website anytime you'd like. We'd also love for you to join the Adopt-A-Cow Fund next year, so if you're interested in joining again or you happen to find this chat and you're new to the program, you are welcome to register and or re-enroll. Enrollment opens on May 1st, and all you have to do is go to discoverdairy.com backslash adopt, A-D-O-P-T, and there you can either log in and re-enroll or create a new account and join the program. Next, as everyone continues to join us live today, you will see that the chat feature is enabled, so please feel free to keep using that chat feature to comment and ask questions throughout the chat. We do ask that you just keep those questions and comments related to the chat and school appropriate. I know we're really excited to hear questions. I know Farmer Layla and Farmer Ryan are really excited to hear your questions, and they are excited to answer and share with you those adorable calves. And before we jump over to Layla and Ryan, we're just going to see who is joining us today. So all the way back at the top, it looks like uh, Brittany was one of our first ones to join Brittany on the Cormic. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, one of our first classes, we had Mrs. Waltz's third grade class from Nixa, Missouri. So welcome and hello, everybody. We're excited to have you third graders. Some other folks that are joining us today, we have Mrs. Johnson's virtual class in Arizona. I like your little cow emoji. Hello and welcome. Good morning. Uh, we've got some Mrs. Sitton's fifth grade class. We've got uh, Mrs. Dodson's fourth grade class. Um, and let's see, let's do one or two more here. We've got a homeschool group of two in Odessa. And we've got uh, Mr. Bulliard's third grade class in Oak Grove. So hello all, welcome. We're so excited to have everybody. Please feel free to keep using that chat. We'll keep our eyes on it for all those questions um, and we'll get to them very shortly. So without further ado, I am pleased to introduce you to Farmer Layla and Farmer Ryan. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? We are doing really well and we have quite a crowd with us today. So we are excited to hear from you and learn all about you and your farm. So I'll let you take it away. Well, my name is Farmer Ryan. And, and I'm Farmer Layla. And welcome to College of the Ozarks. We're thrilled to have you here today. Um, we got our three heifers behind us uh, that you guys have been following, and and they're doing really well this year and, and uh, growing like uh, wild weeds. <laughs> Love it. I'm so excited that we get to see them. Um, so Farmer Ryan and Farmer Layla, do you want to share a little bit about your roles on the farm and um, you know how did you get into this and and maybe just talk about uh, since it's a little bit more unique than a traditional family farm. Uh, yeah so I've been the dairy farm manager here at College of the Ozarks for almost nine years. Um, I went to college here just like Layla and uh, lucked into a job here uh, permanently after that and uh, I manage the herd and, and do the day-to-day -day operations as far as decision-making and, and uh, just caretaking of the cows and helping the students uh, learn how to caretake for these animals. And, uh, and any questions they answer, I try to answer myself. Um, so this is my third year at College of the Ozarks um, and working at the dairy. So I started here my first semester as a student um, worker at the dairy. Um, and then I got the opportunity to take care of the calves and feed the cows and milk and do the various tasks of the dairy. Um, and now I'm a student manager, so I get to oversee all the other student workers and make sure that they have the opportunity to learn and um, get to work with these animals. Too. That is awesome. So do you have a, any plans of doing this as a full-time job once you're done here at College of the Ozarks? So I really hope to one day start my own farm at my house. But uh, career-wise, I actually want to be a math education. Um, 
Nice. Awesome. Love that. Love that. So we have loved following you guys this year, but of course, probably one of the most exciting parts are our beautiful ladies that are standing behind you. So Farmer Layla and Farmer Ryan, do you mind showing them off and giving us an update on how they're all doing? You know, how big are they? How much are they weighing? What are they eating? Um, oh man, look at this close up. We love it. So yeah, go ahead and, and uh, give us an update on how they're doing. Yeah, so they're doing pretty good. Um, so if you want to show Amplify here in the middle, Amplify is the biggest heifer uh, in the group. Um, Layla has her height, but she's weighing almost 600 pounds right now. And she's oh 47 goodness. feet and 6 inches currently. 47? Wow. My goodness. Perfect. 47 inches. 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 <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My bad. All good. 47 inches. She is getting very large. And you said 600 pounds. Oh my goodness. Yep. We love her markings. I've always thought she had beautiful markings and just the unique, unique spots on her head. <laughs> awesome. All right. And then the next one next to her. Uh, the one being nosy here, that's Allie Oop. Um, and uh, she is weighing uh, 570 pounds. 570 pounds and she is coming in also at 47 inches so they're the same height oh man so the other one is just a little bit chunkier but that's all right <laughs> right uh, yeah a little more depth to a rib <laughs> i love that and then the third one which decided to get real comfy cozy on us here yeah, Arlene, uh, she likes to untie herself all the time, uh, but she is the smallest one in the group, uh, weighing about 560. Awesome. Five, and she is only 45 inches tall, so she's a little bit shorter than the other two. Okay, 45 inches tall. Now, now, you know, obviously they're all a little bit different, but they're all born pretty much around the same size. Is that just pretty typical for cows to all have their own heights and weights? Or is there averages that you, you know, you try to shoot for or are any of them of concern? Or are they all growing really healthy and strong? No, we're pretty proud of these three. They've uh, grown really well. Um, I mean, we have goals for them. They need to be a certain weight at a certain age. And all these are meeting our expectations. Um, you know, each one's unique because they all have different mothers and fathers. So uh, their body type is unique to themselves. Awesome. Now you no. mentioned uh, when we were chatting a little bit earlier before we went live that we noticed that all three of these ladies have A names. Do you want to share with everybody the cool thing about all three of them? Yeah, so they all go back to a cow that's still living in the herd today. She's one of our oldest cows here on the farm. Uh, her name is Ashante. And so these would all be great great granddaughters out of her granddaughters out of uh that cow and um her uh ashante's mom was named ashley and she lived uh here for 10 years and probably has somewhere between 50 offspring running around the country as far as a few herd bulls and a lot of heifers um and then they wow. go back to a cow named triday ashlyn who was a World Dairy Expo champion and one of the most influential uh, brood cow mothers in the Holstein breed. Wow, that's amazing. So they're kind of all related since they kind of all come back from the from the same mom, which is pretty cool. Yep. No wonder they look, I would say they look all pretty similar alike. So that makes sense that they're all coming from a, um, from a similar grand, grand dam or grandmother. I guess I guess another fun thing is uh, uh, Allie Oop and Arlene are both out of a bull named Delta Lamba. Um, so they're related on the top side of the pedigree as well. And sure. then uh, then uh, Amplify is a uh, eye candy son, which is a Delta Lamba son. So um, very, very similar. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> Now, Farmer Farmer Ryan, you just said the word pedigree. Um, do you mind just explaining why that's important to you as a dairy farmer and, and what you look in a pedigree maybe just describe what a pedigree is yeah so pedigree is uh basically the family tree of the animal it tells us uh who the dad is and um the mother and the, the grandmother and and every part of that lineage and so it gives us kind of a 
a history lesson on, you know, what famous cows or bulls are in this pedigree and uh, makes these cattle more marketable and um, and we're able to sell really nice daughters out of them uh, to kids who want to show uh, uh, cows for 4-H and FFA. So it gives you something to have a little marketing tool. Very cool. That makes sense. So these are these they've got good pedigrees and we're growing them to make sure they're nice and strong and healthy animals and longevity, right? Being able to have a long lifespan on your farm. Um that's all absolutely all in, thanks yeah. to looking at the pedigree. Awesome. Yeah, now when, these when you can see but, multiple generations running around the farm, it's really unique to you can go back four generations and they're all here. And uh, you know, the one cow lived to be ten and that tried to cow, I believe, to live to be 18. Wow. So, longevity in these cows. Huh. Wow. That's incredible. Um, you know, we've been watching these ladies kind of hang out with each other. Um, and a couple of questions are have come in that are, are, are um, we're, we're noticing some things as we're watching them. They were just wondering, you know, right now they're tied. Do they untie themselves? Are they typically tied? Um, you know, what's the purpose of a halter? Just, you know, maybe explain that a little bit. Yeah, Arlene likes the entire stealth. <laughs> She's kind of ornery. Um, but no. Um, they're not normally tied up. Uh, we just have them tied up today. These calves actually have been kind of famous this year. I think they've been in like five or six different FFA judging contests around the wow. area. So oh my goodness. Uh, they've had to do some traveling as well as uh, help us, uh, you know, educate students as they come to our farm and learn the great knowledge of dairy judging. So they've had a busy year. <laughs> Oh and my adult. goodness! And on top of that, that, so have lots of visitors there. So yeah, sure. they normally just they normally have a uh, a field that they're in outside, and uh, they hang out day um, when they're not uh, on a live video chat. Gotcha. Well, that sounds like they live a pretty, pretty exciting, well, relaxing life, I guess. We're, we're seeing them grow big and strong. Um, what are they eating right now, and about how much are they eating and drinking? Uh, so they're currently getting what we call a growing ration. So they're getting 10 pounds of grain, which is about a 16% protein grain. Um, and then they're getting a, a good grass hay, second cutting grass hay um, right now in that field. So uh, Friday, they will be going out to a big 15 acre pasture where they'll graze for the rest of the summer. Very cool. So they'll get to go out to a nice big pasture, have lots of room to to hang out and with all of their other herd mates, which is which is great. So they're growing really good, and we've loved we've loved watching them grow up. Um, Farmer Layla and Farmer Ryan, we've had a couple of really good questions. Oh, actually, a lot of really great questions. So thank you everybody for using that chat and sharing your questions with us and and commenting. Um, first of all, many people are saying how much they've loved this, how much they would love to come see them sometime. Um, so just just know that there's a lot of love coming from everybody joining us today. Um, some folks did submit some questions before this live chat, those who knew they couldn't join us. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and ask one of those questions. They were just curious. Um, yesterday was obviously the big solar eclipse and you guys are at a good spot for it. They were wondering if the calves and the heifers had a chance to see it at all um, and what that was like for you guys at, at College of the Ozarks. Yeah, so they definitely saw it. Um, I guess the cool thing we noticed is kind of everything went quiet around the farm and they all laid down like they were thinking it was, uh, you know, nighttime. You know, they went under the barn and laid in the straw. And then all of a sudden, the, it got back to being pretty light outside. And they came out and started drinking water and <laughs> grass or eating hay and, and eating the grain. The students had given them a little bit before that. So I think they were all quiet because they weren't all watching it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's adorable. Um, well, very cool. I'm glad they were able to enjoy it with you guys. We have had great questions coming in. So I'm going to start firing some good questions to you if you guys are ready for those. Um, we had one come in from Andrea Hughes. They were just wondering, what do you look for in a cow if they're sick or if they need med medical attention? What are some signs? Because they obviously can't talk to you. So what are some things as you as a farmer look for to be able to know if they're not well? And then how do you help them get better? 
Um, so we just look for them being lethargic, you know, like they'll have droopy ears and and maybe be laying off of the rest of the herd. And, um, you know, they might have a, basically a snotty nose or something like that, uh, I guess is the best way to explain it. So it's kind of looking at them and analyzing, like, maybe this heifer looks different than she globally does. Gotcha. So now I, I have to ask, because Arlene has definitely not been very camera friendly. She's still healthy, right? She's just maybe just not as uh, not as energetic or maybe not as uh, enthused by the camera. <laughs> Is that correct? Yeah, she uh, she might be a little camera shy today. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's just like, let me just hang out down here. I'm 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 relaxed. She likes to be comfy and cozy. Right. But we can see if anyone remembers learning about this throughout the year, we can notice Arlene is doing something that tells us she's really happy and content, which is chewing her cud. And if anyone can see her chewing her mouth like that, um, Farmer Layla or Farmer Ryan, <laughs> uh, do you have any comments on that? Or is, you know, is that for sure something that you look for in, in cows, make sure they're happy and healthy? Yeah, we need to see them chewing their cud. I mean, they got fed a couple hours ago, their morning ration. And and so this is a completely normal sign to come out this time of day out in the barn and see one laying down being comfortable and chewing their cud. That's a really good sign. Awesome. That's great. That's really good to hear. We had a good question from Kaylee Fisher. They were wondering... Do any of them, well, they were, this one was specifically for Amplify, but for any of them, do they have a last name at all? Or is this, um, is Amplify and Arlene and Ali Oop their name? They ha don't have a last name. They have a registered name. So um, typically we'll add like C of O in it um, to signify that they're from our uh, farm, but they just have a first name. Gotcha. Pretty, so pretty I fancy like first them. names. Like on Amplify, her registered name that will follow her the rest of her life is uh, C of O, I can be Amplify. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So nice, long, fancy names. Uh, they're really talkative and hanging out with us today. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had another question coming in here. Um, they were wondering how much milk does a cow produce at your farm a day and are our ladies producing milk yet or when will they start producing milk? So the average per day um, really just depends on how long the cow has been in milk. So how long it's been since she's had her baby and then really how old she is as well. Um, so all of their moms produce about 60 pounds per day. Um, so about 30 in the morning and then 30 at night. And that's pretty consistent. Um, as the weather gets better, they go up. Um, so that's a fun fact about it, too. And then these girls won't produce milk until they're around two years old when they have their own babies. Gotcha. So they have to have their own calf first, around two years old, and then they have their calf. Their calf is raised just like they were, right? Then they join the milking herd with everybody else. Very cool. Um, oh, another a good question from Delaney. She or Ms. Ord O'Neill, they were wondering, do cows play with each other, and how do they play? Oh, yeah. Probably at the beginning of the chat, I don't know if you can see them, but Amplified Alley, they were having a heck of a time, uh, you know, kind of headbutting and playing around with one another. <laughs> yeah, they've definitely so, like, been demonstrating to... what play looks like today. Out in the field, they'll run and jump with each other. Aw, that's adorable. So, um, speaking of that, you mentioned out in the field, they'll kind of run and play. We had a question from Miss um, Malum. They're wondering, what does a typical day look like for a calf? You know, obviously, this is a special day. They're on camera and they're in a special pen. But what does a typical day look like for, for our ladies? Um, so, we'll feed them at uh, 7 in the morning and about 4.30 at night. Um, and uh, the rest of the day, they can do whatever they want. It's kind of like summer vacation uh, for us. You know, they can go uh, lay down under a shade tree or uh, go out and graze or, uh, you know, drink water. Uh, whatever they want to do, they can do it. We show up twice a day to give them their grain and make sure they're still okay from the last shift when we were by the field. So. Gotcha. 
So it sounds like it's a pretty relaxing day for them. Summer break all year long for two yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. and so then after they have their baby, we had a question come in um, from Ms. Torres. They're wondering where do the mother cows go after they have their babies? So what's that experience like as a milk cow? Yeah, so Layla might be able to zoom in on this, but the, the milk herd is right just to the to the right of us. Um, oh. But there's our freestall barn there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is like the work office for the, the cows. They, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the cows have to go to work and produce milk and they get a chance to eat and drink and stay cool under the fans. So, um, in two years, we'll end up over there. And um, if the weather is better today, those cows will be out on pasture grazing, but uh, they're kind of experiencing a little bit of weather pattern coming through. So yeah. In the barn today. So they're in the barn today, and they're typically just, you know, like you said, they get milk and they get to just hang out, chill. And they're right there. Um, it's not like they're too far away because you got to keep your eye on all of them. So once these ladies have their calf, they'll, they'll join them right over there which is pretty cool. They joined the big herd. Um, so we've noticed, some folks have noticed, you know, all three of these ladies are black and white. They were wondering if all cows are black and white or what makes them black and white versus other cows being other colors. Well, about 90% of the, the U.S. dairy herd is uh, the Holstein breed, which all three of these are. Uh, the Holstein breed does have a interesting um Gene, I guess you would call it, um, being that they sometimes would come out red instead of black. So that's a recessive trait and, and uh, really sought after by breeders because it is still kind of rare. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, then the other breeds, you know, we have Jerseys, Ayrshires, and Guernseys here, and um, Milky Shorthorns and Brown Swiss, and all those breeds make up the other 10%. Cool. Okay. So lots of different Nations. breeds. Yeah. Lots of different breeds, lots of different colors, but these are Holsteins, which is why they are black and white. Very cool. Yeah. Um, we have the tallest, breed the tallest biggest, biggest and tallest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Which makes sense why they're nearly 600 pounds and 47 inches already at maybe what, seven months old, eight months old? How, how old are they now? Probably. Yeah, they're pushing seven now. Yeah, seven months old. That's incredible. They are a lot bigger than us at just seven months old. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had um, a good question come in here. They were wondering um, the tags in their ears. What are they used for? What's the purpose of the tags? Uh, so that's a number that will follow in the rest of their life. So it's on the registration paper on that pedigree we talked about. And then any of the data from milk production that they produce uh, be uh, correlated to that year tagging. Awesome. So it's definitely, yeah, used to help you identify them. And that way we know who is who, especially when they when they look so much alike. I'm sure that can be tricky. So that lets us know who is who. Very cool. Um, let's see. Oh, that's a good question. They're wondering if cows ever brush their teeth or you maybe take it one step further. Do they ever get a bath? Um, anything like that? So we actually gave them all baths today. Um, they do get baths. So uh, I have pictures of that. I'll make sure to send in for everyone. That's um, awesome. They, we use Dawn dish soap and hoses and we scrub them and they love it. They think they're getting a lot of love. Um, we don't brush their teeth. So they keep those pretty clean on their own. Gotcha. That that I was gonna say that's that'd be pretty tricky to brush the cow's <laughs> teeth, but that's kind of a brings up an opportunity to share a fun fact, right? Cows don't have any front top teeth. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, so it's only on the bottom and then their back teeth, which is pretty cool because they eat all of the grasses and grains and everything. Um, and speaking uh, speaking a little bit about um, growth and and what they're eating so obviously we talked about how they're eating hay um and a, and a, a mixed ration when they get to be a milk cow what's their diet when they get to be older then uh, so currently our milk cow uh ration is uh corn silage and wheat silage and mixture of grain 
in that gray mix, there is a mineral pellet that gives them all the goodies they need to uh, be healthy and, and uh, as well as we'll have some ground corn, soybean meal, and soy whole pellets in there as well. And so gotcha. that's the perfect ration for them to perform like Olympic athletes. So it's a perfect mis mixed ration, which I believe you probably have a nutritionist that helps you put that together. Is that correct? Something to make sure that they are getting the exact amount yeah. of nutrients that they need? Yeah, so we work alongside a, um, a nutritionist that comes by and, and helps us make a plan on how to make the most milk and keep these cows healthy with the feed ingredients we have on hand. Awesome. Love that. Um, I have a couple of very quick questions here we'll go through and then we'll get wrapping up today. One question was, how many calves can one cow have in a lifetime, approximately? Um, we'll see uh, these cows in our herd have anywhere from like four to six in their lifetime here to see a row. Four to six, and so that makes sense because it's usually about one a year, correct? Until they have their grow their calf, have their calf, join the milking herd, give them a small break, and then and then they and then they're bred. So it's about one a year, is that correct? Yeah, and so I mean, we've had a cow live to be fourteen here in my time here, and you know she had I think eleven calves or something like that. You know, wow, farm, so impressive. That's awesome. And then another question had come in similar to that. They're wondering if you've ever had twins born at College of the Ozarks. Yeah, we haven't had any here lately, but um, we had uh, several um, each year. So, Aww. And so twins aren't common, correct? Usually it's just one at a time. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Oh, man. So these ladies, it looks like they're getting a little antsy that they're ready to go back out to their pasture and with their friends. Um, so Farmer Leela and Farmer Ryan, to wrap up today, you know, we've loved following these girls all year long. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. letting us get to experience them um, and love them and learn about them. Um, but it sounds like a lot of work, what you guys do to take care of them. And we really appreciate that. So we'd love to know what's your why. Why Why have you chosen to be a dairy farmer? I know we talked a little bit about what you do, but what's your reason behind getting up every day and taking care of these cows? I think you just form a passion and a love for, you know, the dairy industry and, and uh, being able to produce that products for consumers uh, that they enjoy so much and it's made into stuff like ice cream and, and getting to know these cows and all the generations uh, that have went through here, you know, their mothers and grandmothers and and uh, just trying to make that next great cow that uh, puts your herd on the map. And just, that stuff brings you joy, but at the end of the day, for me, I have a unique position here being at the college and educate these students with the Holstein cow uh, really makes it fun. Uh, you know, the students have lots of questions and, and uh, be able to use the Holstein cow to, uh, you know, display that, um, you know, uh, really makes me wake up in the morning and want to come to work and educate these next students that are our next generation in agriculture. Yeah. You have a pretty cool opportunity to work with a lot of the next generation there at College of the Ozarks. And Layla, you are one of those students that he gets to mentor. You want to just briefly share, you know, what was what was your why for, you know, striving to be one of the student managers at the dairy? So I joined the dairy. Um, I applied for it because I loved animals, all animals. Um, and then just getting to work with them. They are such unique um, animals and they really do each have their own personalities and you get to learn so much from them and it's really hard work but it's really worth it um so i've just grown that passion and that love um just from being around them and i too um i love teaching i want to teach when i'm um older and there's so much opportunity to learn and to teach others like you are constantly learning here there's never a day i don't i go without learning something new um, about them, about what we do here, or about myself. So that's awesome. What an opportunity to learn and just be submerged with 
I think one of the coolest animals <laughs> that, that we could possibly work with. Um, so thank you both of you for your passion for the dairy industry, for your willingness to share your animals with us. Um, and I know um, we've really loved following you this year. I, we actually had a teacher say, uh, Miss Rubble, that she, she said, my preschool class would just love to say they love Amplify and thank you so much. And I'm sure many others will end up sharing their thanks and their love to you guys. And I know you've gotten lots of fan mail this year. So we really do appreciate appreciate everything you guys have done for for this program and for everyone that's joined us this year so thank you to to both of you um and thank you to our lovely ladies here we had a lot of fun following them they they behaved pretty well for us today which was which was very thankful i'm glad they were wanting to put on a show for the camera so very cool awesome well thank you both so much is there anything else you wanted to share before we jump off today yeah, I just say come on down to College of the Ozarks if you want to see. I know some of you guys have come down to to see your calves, but uh, Farmer Layla here would love to give you a tour of the place and, and end up seeing your calf at the end of the day. So if you haven't made the trip down to Branson yet, I highly recommend it. And, and let us know, and we'll, we'll go show you the calves anytime, whether it's uh, tomorrow or during the summer. So one of us will be here. That is awesome. So I know there was a lot of people saying in the chat they'd love to come visit their calves. So that was an open invite from Farmer Ryan and Farmer Layla to definitely connect with them. Make sure you make arrangements ahead of time and uh, come on out and, and say hello to your calves. They would love to see you. Layla, anything from you? Oh, I just agree with him. Um, I've loved this opportunity. I appreciate you all. I'll keep sending in the fan mail. I'll keep trying to reply and just <laughs> If you get the chance, you should come because we love it. Um, it's a great experience for us, and they really love it. They love the attention, and they love the love. So Awesome. Oh, thank you so much, both. We hope you have a great day, and thank you all for joining us today. I see all of the love and the thank you streaming in, um, pouring into that chat. So thank you so much for being part of this, and we look forward to having you in the program next year. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.